Hey, my dear warriors. I hope you guys can see me as well as hear me. Do let me know in the chat box as well. And uh, I hope I'm audible as well as visible. Let me just uh, refresh and find it out as well. Yes, so looks like I am. Okay, so welcome aboard, welcome aboard, welcome aboard. So today's session is all about optical instruments and this is a part of basically ray optics. And uh, ray optics carries a weightage of 12 marks, uh, give or take. So expect three questions in your NEET examination and also very important from your board's perspective. In the previous lecture, I have completed everything about reflection, mirrors, spherical mirrors, the mirror formula, the refraction, total internal reflection, and also your curved surface refraction, lenses, apparent depth concept, glass slab problems, prism problems, dispersion, all of this in the previous class. So watch that one shot marathon, which is more than three hours, almost close to four hours. So watch that, okay, in case you have missed it. And if you have uh, watched it before, then welcome to this session and uh, make the best use of this. This will complete your re-optics chapter for boards as well as need perspective. Vanakam, good evening. Nice to see all of you and so many of you are excited to grab the 12 marks. Glad to know that. Hello Asta, Hello Harni, Hema, Mimi, Tarika, Viki, Sangeeta, Akshara. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let's begin the class by first of all smashing the like button. Okay, in case you haven't done that yet, please do that. It helps a lot in growing the channel and also hit the subscribe button. And those of you who do not know me, my name is Shreyas. I'm the physics master teacher. So let's begin the class. Okay. Now, uh, the first thing when we talk about optical instruments, you should realize is that what is the basic purpose of these instruments? And when do you use what? See, when you see some object, okay, located at certain distance, then it might be seen clearly, it might not be seen clearly. If it is seen clearly, okay, everything good. If it is not seen clearly, you need the help or you need the aid of some instrument. Now, if the object is very far, then you will use a device called telescope. But if the object is very close, which needs to be seen clearly, you will use simple or compound microscope. So if you want to analyze bacteria, everything, then you will use microscope. If you want to see the stars or the moon or the planets, you will use the telescope. Now that you understand what is it used for, what exactly does each of these devices do? Okay, so understand that. See, when you see an object, let's say I am looking at Pandu. Let's just imagine, let's just imagine this remote of mine is Pandu standing somewhere. Okay, this remote of mine is Pandu standing somewhere. When I see Pandu, okay, I will see that Pandu's height or the entire, you know, uh, length of Pandu subtends certain angle on my eye. Everybody agrees, subtends certain angle on my eye. That means he is, uh, if you take one line from the bottom or the feet to my eye and the top to my eye, there is some angle between these two lines. That is the angle subtended. If Pandu comes close, the angle becomes larger. The angle becomes larger. If Pandu goes far away, the angle becomes smaller. Now think and tell me, when you go far away, the angle subtended reduces. So that is the reason why you will not see clearly. So think and tell me, if an object subtends bigger angle, won't it be better for us? Yes or no? If an object subtends a larger angle onto our eye, then irrespective of whether how small or how large it is, if the angle subtended is large, you will see things very clearly. Yes, Hema, Sushant, Meena, Asta, Hani, Mimi, yes. Akshara, Shaku, Sushanta, Jewel, yes or no? Perfect. Now that's the same principle of an optical instrument. When you look at some object which is not so clear, because the angle subtended is small, with the help of the instrument, the angle subtended becomes large. With the help of the instrument, the angle subtended becomes large. That magnifies the image as compared to the object. And that's how you see things clearly. And that is taking the help of the optical instruments. But before going ahead, there is one simple property of the human eye, which I'm pretty sure you should be aware of. But still, I'll just quickly go through it. Human eye is a very special magnificent lens it's a very very 
you know i would say adjusting lens very uh, special powers it has a normal lens has a fixed focal length but eye is not like that if you see something which is far away i will adjust itself and make the image on the retina the retina sends those signals via the optic nerve to the brain the brain does the processing and that's how you see the uh, you know object because of the image formed on the retina if there is no image formed on the retina then there will be nothing seen by your eye and your brain will not be able to process anything so your eye acts like a lens which can accommodate which can adjust itself depending on where the object is if the object is close it will adjust the focal length so that the image is still formed on the retina everybody with me on this everybody with me on this good evening raj ashwita now the problem is that eyes can adjust itself but not so much you cannot be like hey listen i will bring the object very close you adjust i'll take the object very far you adjust not every time the eye can adjust so because of which there can be some defective eye or there could be a limitation to the eyes accommodating power so what is this accommodating power when you bring an object close don't you feel the strain on your eyes try this out if you try reading a book which is very close to your eyes for a long time you feel strained yes or no but the same book if it is far if it is a far away screen or far away a uh, thing or just staring at a mountain or a lake or the sky it's fine your eyes are relaxed so that tells you the muscles which are responsible for changing the focal length they are called as the ciliary muscles okay they are called as the ciliary muscles you would have learned that in bio so those muscles get strained they have lot of tension they strain themselves when you bring the object close and the eye has to adjust itself when the object goes far away the ciliary muscles relax and you will see the eye is less strained or relaxed condition and it can easily focus a distant object now the limitation is that if you bring the object very close if you bring the object very close less than 25 cm then the ciliary muscles can't strain the eye so much and the eye just gives up it's like okay listen i cannot strain more than this so below 25 cm you will see that the ciliary muscles won't be able to strain the eye and you will not see the image clearly formed on the retina so the image appears blurred so hence 25 cm is the least distance of distinct that means clear vision for a standard average human eye okay for a standard average human eye uh kinematics meena ram i have already done it please check the past videos it's already done if it is not there in the playlist i'll add it in the playlist but it's just done few days back okay so the least distance of distinct vision for an eye happens to be basically 25 cm least distance below which you cannot see things clearly if you take things far away then the eye becomes relaxed it is happy and you keep you can keep taking the object far and far and far in fact even till infinity like you can see a distant star the eye is very pleased happy relaxed so that brings us to relaxed condition and the relaxed condition distance is infinity for a normal human eye so even when the object is infinitely far away the eyes can still focus on it even a parallel beam can be focused on the eye in the relaxed state so that is the standard normal average functioning of a human eye so the farthest distance is infinity the closest or the smallest distance is 25 cm everyone with me yes meena ram that is one shot only that is one shot only everyone with me clearly understood least distance of distinct vision and the total relaxed eye when, which is also called as the normal vision so least distance of distinct vision is 25 cm closest farthest is also called as far point or relaxed eye or normal vision which is at infinity okay ciliary muscles are very chill okay relaxed all right so having said that let us talk about the magnifying power of any instrument magnifying power of any instrument so what is this magnifying power like i told you the angle subtended by the eye matters a lot 
the angle subtended by the object on the eye sorry uh, angle subtended by the object on the eye matters a lot in determining how clear how clear and crisp the image formed is so let me write it down over here let me write it down over here okay uh, yep the angle the angle subtended subtended by the object on the eye that is the one which determines the clarity the clarity of the uh, image which is formed the clarity of the image which is formed how clearly you can see things so imagine imagine guys when an object is over here when an object is over here the angle subtended is less not so clear the same object brought here the angle subtended is larger height has not changed height has not changed only angle has increased that's why it is more clear when the uh, object is brought closer now just imagine now just imagine that the problem in most of the situations is you might be like sir i can bring the object very close very close now sir so then it will appear very clear true but beyond 25 centimeters if you bring it also then what will happen you will not be able to see things clearly because that's the least distance you can bring the eye to below that the eye can't focus clearly because of the uh, additional strain involved in uh, you know uh, 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 what do you say uh, straining the eyes so what is done usually is imagine you want to see an object rather than bringing it close you make some instrument such that the image formed such that the image formed subtends the larger angle but it is conveniently placed at least at or beyond the least distance of distinct vision i'll repeat if this is an object if this is an object you make the image formed here after some lenses reflection refraction something happens the image is formed over here such that it subtends larger angle and the image is at least after the least distance of distinct vision because you can only focus at or beyond the least distance of distinct vision agreed or disagree agreed or disagree come on guys think about it so i am going to make use of an instrument there is some kind of an instrument this is my optical this is my optical instrument this is my optical instrument example it could be here there doesn't matter this is my object this is my object this is my image this is my object this is my image okay everybody with me then th uh, theta 1 and theta 2 what are they called what is theta 1 and theta 2 theta 1 theta 1 is basically angle angle subtended by the object angle subtended by the object okay theta 2 is basically the angle subtended angle subtended by the image obviously it is larger by the image then the magnifying power this is not magnification a lot of people get confused thinking magnification and magnifying power are the same no they are not the same the magnifying power is the ratio of these two angles the larger by the smaller so the magnifying power of that optical instrument is given by the angle subtended by the image which is in this case theta 2 upon the angle subtended by the object which is smaller so that is nothing but theta 1 so that is what magnifying power is that is what magnifying power of any optical instrument is if imagine just giving you an example if this was 10 degrees and this is 2 degrees the angle subtended by the image is 10 object is 2 so 10 by 2 is 5 so the magnifying power is 5x so you would have seen telescopes or microscopes they have some number written on it 5x 2x 100x 300x so the 300x 200x 100x what is it it is how many times is the angle getting expanded that is what it is okay i hope this is clear Mina, it is there in the home screen only if you see on the home screen only right you will be able to see it so as you're watching this lecture you just go over here on the home screen just go down you will see playlist 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 so i think kinematics playlist is not yet made i'll just make sure that that is made as soon as possible okay after the class is over is that okay chalo concentrate on this lecture now 
So once you know this formula, let's move ahead to the next part now. This definitions are very, very important. This definitions are very, very important. Everybody has written it down, has understood it or added to the notes more than enough. If imagine there was only one eye for a person, if a person had only one eye, then which of the following will be true? Option one, option B, option C, option D, more than one option can be correct. Come on, I want everybody to spam the answer in the chat box. And if you have not yet smashed the like button, please do that right away. And if you are not yet subscribed also, go hit the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Come on, you should be a part of this channel proudly. No, number one, neat English channel of our country. All right. So if we had only one eye, then which of the following do you think will be true? More than one options are correct. More than one. Let me tell you, more than one. More than one options are correct, guys. Come on, think about it. What do you think should be the correct answer? Everybody is saying B, visible region would have decreased. Okay, I think you guys are wrong. Uh, okay, so guys, there is one more answer. Image would have not been seen in three dimension. Image of the object would be inverted. How is it possible? You can just close one eye and see. Does everything invert? No, right? Nothing. In, uh, images are not inverted just because you are seeing through one eye. So that is not the case. Visible region would have decreased. Yes. Now, just see anything around you with two eyes open. Now just close one eye. You will see relatively lesser number of things. A part of the things will be blinded. So your field of vision reduces. Definitely correct. Lot of people miss the C option. Image would not have been seen in 3D. The 3D effect, the depth effect uh, comes only because you have two eyes. You get even better depth effects if you have multiple or compound eyes like flies or mosquitoes have. I'm pretty sure you all learned about it in... Uh, your uh, biology so because we have two eyes we get the sense of depth like this eye uh, you know focuses from this side this eye focuses from this side the brain fuses these two images makes a 3d space around you internally so the brain is capable of doing that because it has two points of accu uh, accumulating the data if there was only one point it cannot get that sense of depth seeing from here and here it knows what is the depth of field understood he will be a pirate what is this nonsense? No, obviously it was just a funny option just kept for you. So obviously it's not necessary. But yeah, in the movies they show pirates always have one eye. But that does not mean, but that does not mean he will be a pirate. Okay, great. Now let's talk about the first instrument. B and D, definitely not Meena. Okay, yes Vicky, not. Uh, microscope. Now microscope has two types. One is simple, second is complex or compound. Simple one is really simple. What is this? Have anybody used this anytime? Definitely you would have used this. What I've seen in movies, detectives use this. What is it called? Magnifying glass. So simple microscope is nothing but a simple magnifying glass. You might have also heard about this experiment or maybe you have done this. If you have not done it, please do it. Okay. So you take a magnifying glass and uh, uh, make sure that the rays of the sun are falling onto it and keep a paper close to the focus. So all the rays will accumulate at a point. You will see because all the energy gets concentrated at the point. You will see a lot of heat is produced and the paper starts to burn. So that's your simple magnifying glass. And a simple magnifying glass can magnify objects around you because the angle subtended increases when the rays pass through it. How does it increase? I'll just show it to you using a simple ray diagram. Imagine you take a convex lens. Imagine you take a convex lens. And let's say you place an object somewhere over here. You place an object somewhere over here. Okay, so this is your object. This is your object. And the rays of the object will go in all different directions. One of the rays will go parallel to the principal axis. One of the rays will go parallel to the principal axis. And after, after passing through the convex lens, what will happen guys? It will basically pass through the focus. It will basically pass through the focus. So this happens to be the focus of that particular lens. This is the focal point or from here to here will be the focal length of that lens. You can take many more rays like that. Let's say I take one more ray like this, which is just going to go through this center or the pole. You will see the ray which passes through the center basically goes undeviated like this only. Now I know the rays are looking almost parallel. That's just because of the drawing but uh, actually they will not be exactly parallel. So let me just do one thing. Let me just show one of the ray over here 
and let me just redraw this which will suit my purpose which, which will suit my purpose so maybe I'll just show it like this okay so now I think things are a little bit better they are not looking parallel so much now these two rays are diverging rays and you will see that when extended backwards when extended backwards what will happen they will meet somewhere so if you extend this backwards somewhere over here and if you extend this also backwards somewhere over here you will see that they meet somewhere so this is the location where you get a uh, what kind of image guys look at this this is your image this image is not only erect but it is also enlarged that means uh, magnified it is enlarged and because it is behind the lens so if you are seeing from here look at this object you will see its image little bit bigger on the same side so you don't need a screen it's a virtual because you have to extend these lines so it is also virtual in nature it is also virtual in nature everybody with me everybody with me very good good evening dog brain jaya yes excellent now now if you notice where the object is placed technically the object should be placed if this is the focal length if this is the focal point sorry then the object should be placed between the focal point and the pole between the focal point on and the pole only then the image formed will be basically enlarged magnified basically erect and virtual if you place it at focus then no image is formed and if you place it beyond focus then a real image is formed I don't want a real image I want a virtual image so this is what happens now if you change the objects location or if you change the lenses position you will see the image size will keep on changing it might become big or small so you can change the magnifying power of it now there are two two special cases two special cases for a simple microscope the first case is when you strain your eye that means the image is formed at least distance of distinct vision the image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision and the second case you are looking at that image but the image is formed very far away so your eye is relaxed that means it is a normal situation normal vision so two situations you uh, strain your eye by making the image very close to the eye that is at 25 centimeters that's the maximum limit and the second case which is normal vision that is when it is really really far away so here is what I will say if this is the image distance wait a minute if this is the image distance if V is equal to capital D capital D is nothing but 25 centimeters then it is for the least distance of distinct vision this is max strain on the eye this is a maximum strain on the eye the second situation if the image distance is basically infinity that means this is for normal vision this is for normal vision and it is basically relaxed condition this is the relaxed condition the magnifying power formula for both the situations you should remember the first one is just a d by f least distance of distinct vision by the focal length which is for normal adjustment that means a relaxed condition but when you strain the magnifying power increases by 1 so 1 plus d by f that's the change that's the change uh, Tharshan I told about LDDV before I think you have joined the lecture little bit late I have talked about what is least distance of distinct vision right over here okay 25 centimeters so just rewind the session back you will be able to get it okay so I explained that what is LDDV okay so when you relax it's not that you will not get magnification you will get but it is less it is d by f but when you strain obviously when you put in that effort you are straining yourself the outcome is also better and just like in real life also so when you work hard and you strive harder definitely the results are also better so when you strain the eye it is 1 plus d by f everybody with me on this clear -o? okay so these are the two main formulas for a simple microscope you should know how to draw the ray diagram you should also know the definition of uh, what is magnifying power so probably we can solve some questions based on this okay a simple magnifying lens is used in such a way that the image formed is at 25 centimeters from the eye 
in order to have 10 times magnification the focal length of the lens should be how much okay let's try to understand the question what it means the simple magnifying glass is used in such a way the image is formed 25 centimeters away from the eye so quickly think and tell me is this the case of normal vision or is this the case of least distance of distinct vision because the image is formed 25 centimeters that means very close to the eye so this is the case of least distance of distinct vision yes and when there is least distance of distinct vision the magnifying power formula is 1 plus capital D by F right now what is the magnifying power it is clearly mentioned 10 times 10 times is the magnifying power so magnifying power is 10 least distance of distinct vision is 25 centimeters by focal length great so now shift the terms so you will get 25 by f is basically 9 so f is basically 25 by 9 centimeters now 25 by 9 centimeters i can also write it in millimeters because some of the answers are in millimeters i don't see 25 by 9 anywhere in option a or b it is 2 and 5 obviously it is not them either it will be c or d so think about it what i can do over here what i can do over here because because this is in centimeters to convert into millimeters what i need to do multiply by 10 so this will be nothing but 250 by 9 millimeters everyone with me now 250 by 9 250 by 9 isn't it almost same as 250 by 10 9 and 10 are very close na? 9 and 10 are very close numbers so instead of 9 i can write it as 10 millimeters 0 0 cancels so what will you get approximately 25 millimeters nearly the question said nearly approximately 25 millimeters hence the correct answer will be c everybody got this everybody got this understood or clear -o? let me know in the chat box by thumbs up then we'll move on to the next question so simple microscope question the magnifying power was given focal length was asked but you had to convert it into millimeters so that was the tricky part let's do one more question if there is a microscope having focal length of 5 cm magnification at least distance is how much let's try to do this question the question says what is the magnification at least distance of distinct vision the magnifying power at least distance of distinct vision is given by 1 plus d by f so d is 25 focal length is 5 25 by 5 is 5 so this will be basically 6 so 6 times is the answer where is such an option where is such an option yes option d perfecto perfecto if the question said normal vision if the question said for normal vision so for normal vision then the magnifying power will be just d by f so it will be just 25 by 5 that means it will be just 5 times so read the question whether it is normal vision or whether it is whether it is least distance at uh, least distance of distinct vision so accordingly you are going to use the suitable formula cool so that's how simple the questions are from simple microscope let's go on let's go on uh, to the compound microscope Shaku Fanta's real and virtual image uh, please watch my yesterday's class I have explained in detail what is the meaning of real and virtual image in the starting part of the class maybe in the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes only I have explained it was the yesterday's class now imagine I want to see things which are even smaller which even a simple magnifying glass cannot zoom into so for that I use a combination of two lenses using this combination of two lenses i can magnify even further and i can see even a small bacteria virus as well which is what you see in labs like this like a cell a virus or a fungus or some small object now the idea behind a compound microscope or just your microscope which you see in your day-to-day -day life or maybe in a lab is you have two lenses like i told you the lens through which you see you put your eye over here okay you put your eye over here and you see that lens is called as the eyepiece what is this lens called eyepiece the lens which is close to the object you can see the lens over here you will have a culture or a slide or some object which you want to magnify zoom into the lens which is close to the object what will it be called objective so this is objective this is the eyepiece 
एवरीबडी विद मी ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड आई पीस नाव नाव इमेजिन इमेजिन जस्ट वन सेकेंड लेट मी जस्ट फुट इट ओवर हियर दिस द आई पीस दिस इज बेसिकली द ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंस imagine the only job of an objective lens is to make an image which is big is to make an image which is big that big image is further magnified by this lens so two times the magnification occurs yes or no agreed objective makes a big image somewhere here inside the lens uh, sorry inside the microscope makes a big image that image is further zoomed by the other lens which is the eyepiece lens i'll tell you what because you want to make an intermediate image that also means the image of the objective the image of the objective is the object of the eyepiece convince yourself of this statement sir even for an image at infinite position we can use d by f uh exactly ashrita when the image is formed at infinite position that's when you use d by f because that is normal vision because when the image is formed at infinity that means your eyes are going to focus on infinity they are completely relaxed which is itself called as relaxed or normal vision so that's when you use d by f for a simple microscope ashrita is that okay or sir fine now coming back to this so the image of this objective lens becomes the object for the eyepiece lens perfect everybody understood this point so here in case of microscope or even you will see in telescope the eyepiece actually acts like a simple microscope the one which is shown over here the eyepiece acts like a simple microscope so it will basically zoom into that object making a even larger image but this object is actually the image formed this object is actually the image formed by this particular objective so there is an intermediate image which is formed so how does the ray diagram look like observe it carefully okay i'm just going to draw it i'm first going to draw all the objects and images because that will be easy then draw the ray diagram usually that works out well even in your board exams that's what you can do so this is your object the image formed is basically inverted it's inverted it's a real image which is formed this is an intermediate image this is an inter mediate image which then becomes the object for the next lens this lens over here is basically your objective and this lens over here is basically your eye piece this is basically your eye piece that's where your human eye will be okay from that side now this image becomes the object for this lens and it is further zoomed into and probably you might get the final image i don't know maybe over here just giving you a random diagram guys don't take it literally it can form here here so different possibilities are there this is your final image which is formed now let me show you the ray diagrams how it will look like so basically it will look something like this just one sec so this is how the rays will go to form the image from the object so it's passing through the focal point so this focal point is of the objective so i'm just going to call it as the focal length of the objective this is the focal point of the objective lens keep that in mind fo also you can call it and for the next one uh what i can do is probably okay little bit tricky but i will try this out this is a virtual one okay one second it will go like this and this will be your focal length just one second this will be your focal length of the eyepiece focal point of the eyepiece oh my god okay i think now it's fine so this is how the ray diagram looks like see if you guys have understood this okay i'll just explain this to you this object this object placed in front of the objective makes a real inverted image 
Okay, the rays go like that and form an inverted image. Then this image becomes the object for this lens. It is placed in such a way that this lens behaves like a simple microscope, your magnifying glass. How does the magnifying glass behave? If the object is between the focus and the pole, you will see a virtual enlarged image behind the, behind the lens. So you will see a virtual image behind the lens on this side. So I've just taken one ray parallel to the principal axis. After passing, it becomes, uh, it passes through the focus. So if you extend it behind, it goes over here. See if this is clear. See if this is clear. Hello, Joy. Hello, Pooja. Okay, everyone with me on this understood how this final image is now going to be, is now going to be virtual. It's now going to be virtual. It is also going to be enlarged. And one last thing, guys, one last thing. Will you call it erect? Well, it is erect with respect to this, but this itself is inverted. So it got inverted and then it did not change. So final image is inverted with respect to the original object. So I will just say it is inverted. That's all. So the final image is going to be inverted. Everyone with me? Clear? -o? Understood? Perfect? So this is how the final image is formed. One more thing. The distance between the objective and the eyepiece the distance between the objective and the eyepiece that is called as the length of the microscope. The distance from the objective and the eyepiece that is called as the length of the microscope. Keep these things in mind. Now, if the image is formed very close to the eye, what will happen? The eye will be strained, yes or no? But the benefit will be you will get a good magnification. The magnifying power will be great. If this image is formed very far away from the lens or the, your eye, then your eye will become relaxed, but the magnifying power will also reduce. So just like you had two situations for a microscope, simple one, compound also has two situations. One, when the image is as close as possible to the eye, which is least distance of distinct vision case. And the second scenario is normal vision when the image is formed very, very far away, although it is magnified, but you will see the magnifying power will be slightly less as compared to LDDV case. So the two situations, I will talk about it. But before that, this is your final ray diagram, which is usually shown in your books. It's exactly the same as this one. Yeah, you might be wondering, sir, why haven't you shown the other ray? I could have shown the other ray, but it will just make the diagram very tedious. So I had kept it for the other slide. Here you basically understand what objective eyepiece length, uh, where is the object, what kind of image is formed, etc. Here, this is the proper ray diagram. If you show the second ray, that is also fine. Okay, so if you want, you can also show the second ray, which will make the perfect image here. And you can show one more ray going there and extended backwards will make the image over here. But I have just skipped that second ray. Please keep that in mind. Okay, now if I ask you, what is the magnifying power? You should know the two formulas for both the cases. The first case, first case, when it is at least distance of distinct vision, same thing, 1 plus d by f, 1 plus d by f. For normal vision, d by f is there. But there is one additional term because you have the objective lens. Remember I told you that this lens, eyepiece, behaves like a simple microscope. So the formula is also like the simple microscope only. 1 plus d by f or just d by f. The only additional term which comes is for the objective. Observe it carefully. 1 plus d by focal length of the eyepiece, just like your microscope formula. d by f, just like your microscope formula for normal adjustment. The only additional term is L by f naught. L by f naught. What is L? L is the length of the tube. L is the length of the tube. f naught is the focal length of the objective. F0 is the focal length of the objective. You can see over here. This is the focal length of the objective. Length of the tube is basically L. So that's the only extra term which will come. So guys, remember, a compound microscope is a simple microscope plus an additional lens which creates a real image. That's all. If you just look at, ignore this and just look at this part, it just looks like a simple microscope diagram, nothing else. So the formula will be 1 plus d by f or just d by f into l by fe, l by, sorry, fo, 
fo is the focal length of the objective lens that's all you can see that see if this is very very clear see if this is very very clear so this much part is just like your simple microscope simple microscope even this part over here this part over here is just like the simple microscope only this l by f naught is that extra part where this l is basically length of that particular tube this fo is the focal length of the objective focal length of objective lens which is close to the object everyone shall we do some questions ready excited put some heart or fire in the chat box see if you have written this down in your notes or added to your notes whatever points were missing or whatever points you had skipped before this let's do this question in a compound microscope the focal length of objective is 1.2 focal length of ips is 3 or the length of the tube when the image is formed at infinity the magnifying power of the microscope is how much let's do this question guys come on so clearly it is mentioned final image is formed at infinity that means it is nothing but normal vision it is nothing but normal vision clearly it is understood the question says what is the magnifying power of the microscope since it's a compound microscope the formula that i will be using is l by f not will come as it is that is for the objective into should i use 1 plus d by f or 1 or just d by f because it is normal vision i'm just going to use d by f it's going to be slightly less but this is for the eyepiece so this is the formula that i need to use is the length of the tube given uh i think the length of the tube was something i think it was 36 i think that is missing i think the length of the tube i can just look at it and figure out yeah it should be 36 cm i guess so let me just write it and just see what you get length of the tube is 36 divided by focal length of the objective is basically 1.2 into least distance of distinct vision is 25 focal length of the eye piece is basically 3 is basically 3 now you can see 1.2 into 3 is 3.6 1.2 into 3 is basically 3.6 3.6 goes with 36 10 times correct and 10 into 25 10 into 25 is nothing but 250 so the magnifying power is basically 250 times 250x yes ashrita yes perfect yes sarvana it is there it is there uh for j advance this year i uh, let me check bacha i'm not sure because usually it was not there but this year i think they added few extra topics i don't remember clearly whether they added j uh, you know optical instruments or not because they added electromagnetic waves and a few other things i don't remember it exactly you need to check it you can just check it online itself okay so every year they keep changing the syllabus yes option b is correct now coming to the next part and that is telescope so whenever you see a microscope problem remember you will generally be using these two formulas at the most you might be asked to draw the ray diagrams in case of board examinations and they will be asking you how the image is formed what kind of image is formed etc so these are the standard problems direct application of formulas nothing great now if the object is very far like you look at a star or the moon the rays are almost going to be parallel and the object is going to subtend very small angle on your eye so to see it very clearly you want to make sure that those parallel rays get magnified and you get a big image formed behind the lenses again the arrangement is very similar to a microscope you are going to have two you are going to have basically two lenses one is the objective the one which is used to see the object and through one where you are going to put your eye and look into the telescope that is basically your eyepiece that one okay this one over here okay so that is basically your eyepiece and this is basically your objective so this is again very similar to a microscope but there are some small changes here the object is going to be at infinity it's not going to be close number one change number two change is that the image will also be formed very far it won't be formed very close to your eye because the object is very far the image is also very far but the image is very magnified 
The third thing which is different is you will see the objective lens is very big. You will see telescopes having very large aperture. There are two main reasons for having a very large aperture of the eyepiece. So let me just mention that over here. The eyepiece, I'm sorry, not the eyepiece, the objective, the objective lens, objective lens has a very large aperture. The reason for having a very large aperture is number one, the first reason is to basically resolve the images, to resolve resolve the images clearly clearly you will understand more about resolution in the wave optics chapter so there is this concept called as the resolution which is based on diffraction effects so the images are very clear distinct when you have a large aperture as compared to a small aperture because diffraction effects get nullified a little bit and the second one is to accommodate more light to increase the intensity of the light rays to see a more clear image to make the image to make the image intense or basically brighter to make the image brighter by taking in more and more rays because when you see uh, maybe mars or some star the light which is coming is hardly anything so if you have more and more light rays the image formed will be more intense and bright so that is another reason why you have a large diameter or an aperture of the objective lens is that clear is everybody understanding the two reasons why the objective lens of a telescope is large for a microscope it is not needed the object that you are seeing is only so small bacteria fungus cell it is so small so having such a big lens is of no use so that's why in a microscope you would have seen I don't know how many of you noticed this in a microscope the objective lens is very small you can see that even in the actual diagram of the microscope the objective lens is very small so small because you are hardly seeing such a small object here why do you need such a big lens it's a waste of money material resources so that's why you will see only in the case of telescopes you will see that the uh, objective lens will be much much bigger okay great great so much sundaram you can just replay the part later on and you can join in bacha okay don't worry the entire lecture is going to be there so in case of a telescope the only change in the ray diagram will be you will see that the rays rays will come from infinity rays will come from infinity from the objective lens and it will form an intermediate image somewhere over here it will form an intermediate image over here so i would just say object at infinity because the object is on that side hence this will be the objective lens and this will be the objective lens this will be the eyepiece that's the big change over here the image is going to be formed the image is going to be formed almost at the focal point focal point of the objective lens because object at infinity images will be formed on the focal point or on the focal plane this image is placed in such a manner that this eyepiece acts like a simple microscope so it will make a magnified image of this object this intermediate object on that side which is magnified it is erect with respect to that and it is also virtual so you are going to see a big image on this side so this image i'm just showing it here for now but actually this image which is finally formed is at infinity it is also virtual it is also virtual it is also magnified or enlarged it is also magnified or basically enlarged and it is also inverted in nature as compared to the original object so if one has to show the ray diagram for this probably you might show it like this okay oh my god i think the ray only bent so it's better not to show it because it's not to scale and i'm not drawn it properly okay so maybe if i had to i'll have to redraw this entire thing okay something like this now it's fine look at this 
वे ऑप्टिक्स आई एम नॉट श्योर बच्चा फर्स्ट टाइम कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ओनली ऑन द हैवी वेटेज चैप्टर्स शाकू ओके शुड आई फॉलो माई क्लासेज और लर्न डेरीवेशन फॉर माई बोर्ड सर सी बी एस ई येस यू शुड लर्न डेरीवेशन फॉर योर बोर्ड सेपरेटली इनफैक्ट ऑन जे इंग्लिश चैनल आई हैव डन ऑल द डेरीवेशन एंड रिसेंटली ऑल्सो आई अपलोडेड सम डेरीवेशन क्लासेज ऑन दिस चैनल एज वेल सो प्लीज वॉच दोज डेरीवेशन क्लासेज इट्स देयर फॉर बोर्ड वॉट एवर डेरीवेशन आर रिक्वायर्ड ना ऑफ एट लीस्ट द मेन चैप्टर्स आई हैव डन इट ऑलरेडी जस्ट वॉच इट ओके एवरीबडी विद मी ऑन दिस अंडरस्टूड हो क्लियर हो कैन वी गो अड ओके सो दिस इज हाउ द फाइनल इमेज इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म एंड अगेन ओवर हियर यू हैव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ लेंथ ऑफ द ट्यूब अगेन हैव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द लेंथ ऑफ द ट्यूब सो दिस डिस्टेंस इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज द लेंथ ऑफ द ट्यूब ऑफ द टेलीस्कोप इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द लेंथ ऑफ द ट्यूब ऑफ द टेलीस्कोप एंड वन मोर थिंग गाइज वेन दिस इमेज इज फॉर्म बिकॉज द फाइनल इमेज इज ऑल्सो फॉर्म दैट इन्फिनिटी दिस पॉइंट ऑल्सो हैपन्स टू बी द फोकल लेंथ ऑफ द आई पीस this is the focal point of the ipis this is focal length of the ipis this is focal length of the objective so in fact from this diagram only you can see one more interesting thing i don't know whether you can see that this is basically the focal length of the ipis and this one is basically focal length of the objective so fo and fe together give you the length of the tube so the length of the tube i can just say it is equal to f not plus fe in case of a telescope in case of a telescope everybody clear about this very good now the magnifying power you only think and tell me will a telescope be used in least distance of distinct vision mode or normal vision mode i want answers from everybody out here is the telescope going to be used in least distance of distinct vision mode or normal vision mode obviously come on think about it the image image is formed at infinity that means it must be normal vision yes or no it must be normal vision there is no case of least distance of distinct vision so there is only one formula for a telescope and that is magnifying power at infinity that is f not by fe some books also put minus sign not just over here but some books also put the minus sign even in this formula that is only to show that the final image is inverted so don't get scared even if you see a minus sign over here even if you see a minus sign here and here don't get scared it is just because i know that the final image is going to be inverted in nature be it a microscope or even for a telescope guys even for a telescope the final image is inverted so that's why you will see this minus sign you can show it in either places just the magnitude will be f not by fe so this is the main formula that you are going to use the length of the tube i just told you it is f not plus fe focal length of the objective plus focal length of the eyepiece as simple as that object first eyepiece later on objective by eyepiece simple let's do some questions let's do some questions okay here it comes what is this question say the focal length of the objective is 1 meter the magnifying power is 20 what is the length of the telescope for a relaxed eye everything is in centimeters so maybe i'll keep all the things also in centimeters the focal length of the objective is given to be 1 meter which is basically 100 centimeters the magnifying power is given for a relaxed eye which is the general case of a telescope we know the magnifying power of a telescope is focal length of objective by focal length of eyepiece magnifying power is 20 focal length of objective is 100 divided by fe so fe will be 100 by 20 so fe will be just 5 so focal length will be 5 cm great but the question is not that question is what is the length of the telescope read the question carefully the question says what is the length of the telescope the length of the telescope is f not plus fe f not is 100 fe is 5 so it should be 105 cm this should be the answer where is it option c exactly uh when we, uh, will we then see inverted image yes shaku you will always see inverted image be it microscope or be it a telescope now because we already know that it is inverted so one option is always look at it ulta you look at it only upside down so you can see the perfect image or you keep it in mind that whatever you are seeing is opposite and if you whatever calculations you make accordingly you make note of that okay cool so moving on to one more question maybe 
Yes, the magnifying power of a tube 60 centimeters in length is 5. So a telescope whose tube length is 60 has a power of 5. What is the focal length of the eyepiece? I think it's a complete question based on formulas. Let's stick to the formulas. Length of the tube is F0 plus Fe. That's one formula. The second formula is magnifying power. Magnifying power is F0 by Fe. Magnifying power is given to be 5. F0 is not known. Fe is also not known. So from this F0 is 5 times of Fe. F0 is 5 times of Fe. So how about putting the value of F0 over here? So if I just put 5 times of Fe over here, let's see what do we get? So 5 Fe plus Fe is basically the length which is 60 centimeters. As per the question, length is 60. So this 60 therefore will become 6 times of Fe. So Fe will become 60 by 6. Therefore, what will Fe be? It will be 10 centimeters. What is asked in the question? Focal length of the eyepiece. Yes, focal length of the eyepiece is 6, uh, sorry, 10 centimeters. If the question said, what is the focal length of objective? It will be 5 into 10, which is basically 50 centimeters. But that is not asked, just finding it for you. Hence, the answer is 10 centimeters. Everybody clear? Yes, Ashwita, very good, very good, very good. Google Logical, you are uh, posting unnecessary doubts over here. I will not be answering it. Okay. So now that we have completed optical instruments, what is the next job? You just need to go to Telegram channel. Make sure that you join the Telegram channel by going to the link which is there in the description box. I'll be posting the PDF, download the PDF and revise all the problems, all the questions, be it from NCRT, be it your formulas, be it the definitions, be it the ray diagrams, be it your need questions. Keeping in mind that you have formulas, concise notes, sample problems right over here with my handwritten notes in this Telegram channel. And also make sure that you attend all the classes regularly so you do not miss any class. What you need to do so that you do not miss any class, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you will get notified. And also support the channel by smashing the like button. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you put it up in the comment section ray optics done and dusted ray optics done and dusted if you have attended previous class and today's class post it so that i know how many of you have completed ray optics and the next class will be on current electricity and i'll be also helping you for your board examinations even for english and tomorrow there is going to be a special session at seven o'clock so do not forget to join me at seven o'clock for that special class which is about distractions and the most important things which generally nobody talks about so all this in tomorrow's class and next week, obviously, current electricity and then English preparation. And after that, obviously, physics preparation continued for your boards. That's it from my side. This is Captain Shreyas here. Do not forget to post the comments. Reoptics done and dusted after the class is over. Bye-bye. Assalamu signing off.